This is the one who was not deserted by God on the day of struggle and now wears a crown of victory for faithfulness to the Lord's commands. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Extolling your might, O Lord, we humbly implore you that as St. George imitated the passion of the Lord, so he may lend us ready help in our weakness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all, the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. 
Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue on in this Easter season, we also have the happy coincidence today of the commemoration of the feast of St. George the Martyr, the famous St. George the Dragon Slayer, as he's often known. And St. George has a lengthy history of devotion in the church. His cult, his following, arose in the east and gradually spread its way west, and it saw sort of a rebirth an interest in St. George in the time of the crusading periods, and that's when his devotion really spread, especially through northern and western Europe, thus becoming the patron saint of England. Thus, people uh, in our colonial history of this country, like George Washington, going all the way from the east, now this far to the west. And when we read the lives of early saints of the church, especially people like, especially saints like St. George, whose dates his death probably around the year 303, sometime in the reign of the Emperor Diocletian, it's easy to dismiss them because we see that as the story of the saint occurs, generation after generation sort of elaborates on the story. This is a type of writing in the church history called hagiography. So hagiography being broken down, graphy, you know, writing about, and hagia is the Greek word for holy, or like we have in English through the French, we get the word saint, which comes from Latin sanctus. It means the holy ones. And in the East, they would say hagia, holy, the saints. So writings about the saints, but it's not a historically accurate writing in the modern sense. It's trying to get to the heart of the life of one who has completely given themselves over to Christ for the edification of the faithful. So let's make the distinction between factual truth and hagiographical truth. Now, it's not to say that St. George didn't exist. Clearly, his cult goes so far back, and it's so early and so widespread with the dedication of churches to him that St. George most definitely existed. And we know these few things about him, and then as the years go on, we hear more and more stories that aren't meant to lead us into error, but are actually lent to teach us how we might integrate his virtue, which has been known since the beginning, in more and more profound ways through the telling of these stories. We believe that St. George was of Greek extraction, but also the son of a Roman citizen and a soldier. And his mother very probably came from the area that's today known as Palestine or even the country of Israel. So he's sort of of a mixed background, which was very common in the Roman Empire, and he was a soldier. And as so was often to occur in those early centuries of persecution, the Christian faith grew very quickly in the Roman legions with the Roman soldiers, who were a very religious bunch of men. We have the modern day adage, there's no such thing as an atheist in the foxhole. But even in the ancient world, You might find among soldiers some of the most zealous religious men, whether they were pagan or not. It's still something that goes hand in hand with military service, and perhaps we can explore that. Anyways, the Christian faith took off. It took off in the Roman legions. And at first, this might seem odd to us, because our faith is based, as we celebrated in the Holy Triduum, in a failure. Our faith is based in weakness and failure. Jesus was killed. Though innocent, he was betrayed and handed over by his own people to a foreign power to be killed. He didn't raise up a legion of soldiers. The only of his disciples who raised the sword to defend him was St. Peter, and even St. Peter was rebuked for picking up the sword and turning into violence. Because the Lord has a kingdom that is not of this world. 
but Christ takes the relationship between weakness and strength and he turns the world over, doesn't he? Because Christ's strength was in his willingness to empty himself of a power he had and to accept the virtue of fortitude, of courage, and to be willing to suffer death. So the greatness of our chief soldier of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not strength that betrays death, but strength that embraces death. And Christ is the one who conquers death itself. He wrestles the devil. He pins the devil and saves us from our great and ancient foe. Christ is a soldier of soldiers. When we understand the full depth of this, we could see why a man like St. George in the strongest army of the era would give himself and trust himself fully to this great soldier. As occurred in the times of persecutions, Christians were often purged from the Roman legions. It was very simple. The religious soldiers would get up, sacrifice to the god, say, of war, or the own god of this specific legion itself, and so often they were found out because they refused, because they only worshipped the one true soldier, Christ the Lord. And what is it about the military life that is such a beautiful analogy for the Christian life? It's that we need courage, we need fortitude, we need discipline and self-sacrifice. That was the whole point of the Lenten season we just completed two weeks ago. It was basic training. Every year we go back to the basics and we take on burdens that we would rather not have. Think of boot camp. Soldiers are given half rations or less. They have to learn how to survive without the requisite or normal amount of food. Literally, sometimes backpacks are filled with hundreds of pounds of weight and they're expected to go the distance. And so we took on penances, extra burdens to make things heavier for ourselves so that after this training is complete, we would be better soldiers. We would be better Christians, belonging more and more to the Lord. This is is why St. George had such an impact on the early church, and this is why he's inspired generations of Christians beyond that. Because in the life of discipline of the military, we Christians find a perfect echo, an analogy for what we are about in our own life of faith. St. Paul says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, it's not against armies that are lined up before us, but our struggle is against principalities and powers, fallen angels, demons, the world, the flesh, the devil. And as a soldier has to be ready to do his duty, though he does not look for war, he longs for peace, he is willing to contend and to fight for his homeland. And we must be ready, brothers and sisters, to fight for our true homeland, which is not just the shores of the United States of America or any place in Europe or any place in this world, but our true patria, Our true homeland is now heaven because of the citizenship we've gained by our baptism this Easter season. In the gospel, the Lord said to us, the Father does not ration his gift of the Spirit. How today have you been thinking that you don't have enough? Or maybe your journey's over. Or maybe you have a lot more together than you think. How often does our faith become routine? The fact is, so long as breath remains in our lungs, so long as we have another day, the Christian contest, the Christian journey is not over. We haven't yet to see the places we're called to be brought. But, The Lord does not ration his gift of the Spirit. Every day, he offers us a fresh outpouring to engage in this contest, to do battle, to be better trained, to be more disciplined. 
And just as there's nothing more inspiring than a man or woman who has given themselves to the point of death for those they love, we Christians have to give ourselves in a slow martyrdom that lasts the length of our days to give witness for the one we love the most that we might win over more to be in that same courageous love that we might bring others to Jesus. So today we pray to the great martyr St. George. We ask for his intercession for the grace of fortitude in our faith and that we would never grow slack or slothful in our fight. May his fortitude inspire us. May we always remain open to the one who does not ration the spirit. With confidence that the Father is always eager to hear us and that he does not ration the Spirit, we present our needs and petitions to him. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Conlon, and our administrator, Bishop Hates, that they would be granted wisdom to shepherd the faithful each day, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our government officials, especially President Trump and Governor Pritzker, that they would act with prudence and for the common good, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and suffering, especially for victims of the coronavirus, that they would receive healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. For all healthcare workers and first responders, that they would be given courage and understanding as they assist those who are in need of their help. We pray to the Lord. For all military personnel on the Feast of St. George, that they would continue forward in fortitude and self-sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that we would be blessed with charity and patience to assist our families, neighbors, and those most in need. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died and those who will die this day, that they may see the face of God and live. We pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for Tony Clark and Thomas Howdeck, we pray to the Lord. for all the intentions we bring to this Eucharist. And especially for the intentions, healing, and forgiveness of sins of those who cannot attend this holy sacrifice in person, we pray to the Lord. Father, we know when we approach you in the name of Jesus, your Son, you send us the Holy Spirit. Lord, remind us that you never ration your gifts that you spread upon us and give us every grace and heavenly virtue so that we would pr pursue you with the fullness of our hearts. Hear our prayers for we make them through the same Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr George, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
how precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones. Alleluia. Please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you spiritually, sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. As the offices remain closed, feel free to contact us at 815-436-2651 and one of our staff will return your call. While the church and Adoration Chapel are closed, you can visit our online chapel, including Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, on our website, smip.org. We will continue live streaming daily mass at 9 a.m. and on Sundays, 
daily at 9 a.m. and on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.45 in Spanish. We are planning a white mass honoring and supporting healthcare workers to be live streamed on our Facebook page next Thursday, April 30th at 7 p.m. Please spread the word to all doctors, nurses, nursing home personnel, housekeeping, maintenance, and food service employees at healthcare institutions and all other healthcare personnel. There will also be a blue mass to honor first responders, police officers, firefighters, medics, telecommunicators, and their support staff to be live streamed on May 12th at 7 p.m. We want to pray for them and give them a blessing during this difficult time when they are on the front lines. The Northern Illinois Food Bank's Mobile Pantry will be distributing food in the St. Mary's parking lot today, beginning at 5 p.m. There is a drive through delivery in which clients remain in their cars and bags and boxes will be provided for them. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.